Welcome back, Shaloners. Well, today, we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna talk about some good news. I know, right? Like, it's so easy for us to get in these negative loops about celebrities because they're stupid and they make very stupid decisions and they remind us of the stupid decisions we make. But every so often, one comes along and I'm like, you know what? Awesome, good job. And today, we're gonna digitally high five Katy Perry, not just because she's pregnant, because cool, you know, I'm not like a kid person, but because she seems to have broken the cycle of fuckboy relationships and girl, we want to appreciate you for that. So we're going to break down Katy Perry's history, what I think she learned from it, how Orlando Bloom is different than all of this, and most importantly, what we can learn, namely how to finally find a good guy after dating John Mayer. Ugh. But first, just want to remind you guys, if you have a love question for me, find me on my website, shallonlester.com, and click Get Help. If you want to book a video shout out with me, wish a friend happy birthday, break up with the, your own John Mayer, or perhaps actual John Mayer, I'm around, find me on Cameo, and be sure to follow me on Instagram for inspiration, and I let you guys vote on the next video topic and weigh in, keep up with my travel adventures, all of that. So Katie and Orlando announced that they're expecting their first baby. Now, they got engaged last year on Valentine's Day. You know, I hate people get engaged on Valentine's Day. I just think it's cheesy. You know, it's like, oh, are you at Olive Garden? Oh, my God. Valentine's Day. It's just like, I don't know. But Katie is kind of cheesy. You know, like, that's also sort of like track. So God bless. But there's been, like, speculation that maybe she's pregnant and blah, blah, blah. And she, like, released a music video called Never Worn White. And she's, like, touching her baby bump. And it's in that. And I also think that's cheesy. And, like, you can just post it on Instagram. I don't know. Like, a whole music video. It's, again, God bless. Godspeed. You do you, boo. Whatever. But her and Orlando are engaged and he has always been very vocal about how he wanted to have more kids he's got a nine-year-old son with miranda Kerr, kerr the uh supermodel who was married to the dude who started snapchat who cares i've also heard she was a bit of an escort for a while mm -hmm. i mean get that money girl you know but like modeling on yachts in dubai okay but he's been really vocal about wanting more kids and so like this is a really happy thing and orlando bloom you know how sometimes, like, when you think, when someone's like, what are your favorite movies? It's like, I don't think about what movies I enjoyed. I think about what movies, like, blew me away at the time I saw them. And, like, seeing him as Legolas in Lord of the Rings, a movie I couldn't stand otherwise, I was like, this is my sexual awakening. Like, it was crazy. Like, he's the most beautiful person I've ever seen. He He's 43 now, so he's not, like, hot, hot anymore. He's got a big, um reservoir of talent based on those naked pictures we saw of him on a paddleboard one time pretty big talent at least the ones i saw maybe those are justin bieber anyway so katie and orlando met in 2016 they started flirting at a golden globes party and they started dating but then they split up like i think a year later but then got back together a year like later in that year so by the end of 2017 they were back together and he has been like cute boyfriend like when she performed i think at hillary clinton's fundraiser it was something for the it was something and he was like filming with his iphone and like dancing along it was really cute and he seemed they just seemed very into each other and katie has talked about their relationship and said that when they met he said they were going to draw the poison out of one another and I thought, I was like, that's really, that's a really interesting way to phrase it. And she's like, and we have, we keep each other very accountable emotionally. We are 100% honest with each other. And it's like constantly being on this emotional and spiritual cleanse and journey. And I've never had a relationship like that before. And I was like, huh, that, like you see them, you're like, oh, they're cute. They're both like two attractive, successful people, whatever. But I was like, that tells me so much about their relationship. But before we go into their relationship, we got to understand where she came from, right? Because we can talk about, oh, she's got this great, healthy relationship with Orlando Bloom. It's not that she has it. It's why she has it, right? Because I know a lot of you guys are brokenhearted. I kind of, I am too, if I'm being completely honest. Things are hard to get over. And 
even if you're over a person, you're not over like the legacy of the pain. And that is truly what we need to work on. I feel like I'm going out of order. I am like beyond premenstrual. I cried at a Mazda commercial earlier today. Ignore me. So let's take Katie's relationship history all the way back to the beginning. Now, she actually was engaged to a guy I know, Travis McCoy from Gym Class Heroes. Like I was very much in that scene at the time. And so she was like in, she was like at the same events at the same parties and she was really nice. You know, she was just like kind of there and like I didn't, you, you didn't know she was going to be this like superstar that she was and like good for her, you know? So after Travis McCoy, that didn't work out. You know, Travis had some issues of his own to sort out. She met and married Russell Brand. Oh, this guy, this guy who is like the funny guy. You know, okay. Okay. Oh yeah. The bangs, these bangs are making me happy today. I've, I've done a video on how ugly guys will wield hot chicks when they're vulnerable because Katie came off of this thing with Travis, right? A failed engagement. Maybe her career was like, her career was going really well, but it's very isolating to be famous. And Russell Brand comes along. This is 2008, right? They meet on the set of Get Him to the Greek. He's like, oi, you're a fit bird. And she's like, really? You know, like whatever it is, he said probably something along those lines. And she looks at him as like, he is gonna worship me because I am so far out of his league. Like he is going to be obsessed with me. And for a while he was, and they married within a year of meeting. That is fast. You don't know someone after a year. You might think you do, but we overestimate, no, we underestimate someone's ability to curate what they tell us and to curate their personality and put a very charming spin on their history or their present or things that we don't want them to know or red flags or gaslighting and all that stuff, right? And so to marry some, to meet and marry someone in the same year, that's a recipe for disaster. And oh, wow, it was. He definitely adored her, but Russell Brand is... Russell Brand is like, he's a love bomber. He's a very intense person. He's like kind of the original Pete Davidson. Like tattoos, very funny, big dick energy, not very attractive. So you're like, oh my God, he's gonna worship me. And then you're like, what? You're a mess. Like my things are. I'm sorry, I've been on keto for a while and I had cake last night and I feel like I can feel how different my face looks. Like the sugar is like poisoning me from the inside out. So, Things went south with Russell very, very quickly. He was, you know, a recovering drug addict. He might've still been doing, he's been very vocal about that. He's an alcoholic. He's also just famous and a fuck boy. He's like a famous fuck boy. Did you see Forgetting Sarah Marshall? I don't think he was acting. I think he didn't even know that there was a movie going on. He just wandered in kind of like, you know, Cardi B on the set of Hustlers. You're like, does she know that this isn't, just let her go, just mic her up and let her do whatever she wants to do. Because I think that was his actual personality. Just like, oh, did I not tell you I was going on tour? Yeah, no, it's all right. Just stay. I'll bring my 10 other girlfriends. And it's like, I, I'm sorry, what? And during their marriage, she was very disrespectful to her. Like, remember that picture he posted of like her in bed? She just woken up. She was like spotty face, like retainer in. And then he talked about how she farted. I don't say that word like I guess like I won't say that word gun to my head I won't say it but he's like she's she's a wonderful singer but you'd be surprised what comes out the other end or something like that if your husband your husband said that about you to in an interview which I am pretty sure no one asked hey is Katy Perry very gassy I'm sure that that didn't come up I've been, I've interviewed a lot of people, was not on my short list of questions. The fact that he would speak about her that way and post these pictures about her, it was manipulative and it was controlling. It was almost like abusive. I mean, not like abusive, abusive, but it was like, it was meant to hurt her. And that was meant to minimize her. And that was meant to keep her in line. Don't you forget who's in charge here, me. Because I'll tell things about you that you don't want people to know. And then I'll be like, what are you getting mad about, babe? It's just humor. Come on, listen up then. And it's not funny when you do things specifically to hurt somebody else to control them. It's fucking gaslighting, right? So that didn't last very long. And she said that he texted her on New Year's Eve 2011 to say he was divorcing her. You know, you think that the word husband has weight. You think that it means something. 
And if you haven't been married, you think the word boyfriend has weight and that it means something. You think the word love means something and it has weight. And for people like us, it does. And for people like him, it doesn't. So after that, she went, <laughs> bless her heart, after that wrenching divorce and humiliating situation, and they were married for less than a year, which is humiliating even if you're married to a good guy. I was married less than a year and it was humiliating to have my marriage end. And he was a wonderful, wonderful person. He wasn't like, beep, 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 like pecking at me. My God, never, never. So she went out of the frying pan into the fire with John Mayer, the king of the douches. It's like she was in a video game and she had to be like the mini boss before she ascended to the grand boss, John, John Mayer. I have had my own run-ins with John Mayer and he is charm incarnate. Like he is smooth and he knows what you want to hear and he tells it to you and he like wields you. Like he could grab you by the neck and just drag you away. <laughs> like you're like, he's very, very intelligent. And I live in New York City. I meet a lot of very high achieving, very intelligent people and he is up there. And I see a pattern with Katie. I see her drawn to very smart fuck boys. Now we like to think of a fuck boy as just the douche, the, the gas station guy, roller from Claws, Justin Bieber, who it's like, they're manipulative, but they're not like smart. Like, I don't think of Justin Bieber as like a smart, like in, he's not like an intellectual, you know? <sighs> but I think of Russell Brand as being very smart. He's very funny and you can't be that sharp and be dumb. John Mayer is very, very smart. I mean, he's like a musical genius and that's, you know, but he's also, he's also really intelligent, but they're also douchey. And why is she going for smart guys? Cause she's one of these celebrities who has a chip on her shoulder about not being educated. I see this all the time with celebs. I've, I've met a ton, I've interviewed a ton. Like I know all the behind the scenes gossip. If you guys are new to this channel, I used to be the editor of Star Magazine, so. Um, it just sounds like some weird super fans, like I run 25 Stan accounts, like, um, but this is very, very, very common. It's very common with athletes. Um, I've seen it a lot with like hockey players, like Sean Avery. Did you guys remember him on the Rangers? He dated like one of the Olsen twins and like he married Hillary Rhoda, the supermodel, huge chip on her shoulder that he's not educated. And this is common because like people look down on celebrities and they, you know, they think like they're dumb. They can be manipulated by the record label or the director or whatever. And they they tend to overcorrect. They tend to be bombastic douchebags like Sean Avery and some other people, you know, with just like this faux and this mansplaining bullshit. Or you have people like Katy Perry who gravitates towards people who she feels like she can learn from. And that is her greatest strength, but it was weaponized against her and it became her greatest weakness, right? She was pulled towards these guys who were so, 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 so intelligent. And in Jessica Simpson's book, she talks about how intelligent John Mayer was and how attractive that was, especially for someone like Jessica, who had this reputation of being just like the dumb blonde, right? And Katy Perry was like the dumb brunette, the tits, the Christian tits, you know, Jesus jugs. So for her to be aligned with someone like that, it gave her like this sort of subconscious legitimacy. And what do we say about hurt lockers? We don't want to date them. We want to be them. Right. And again, if you're new here, a hurt locker is the name I give to people we like imprint on that our ego fuses to because we are in a place of fractured identity, poor self-esteem, stagnancy, whatever it is, trauma. My hurt lockers have been um, hardworking, humble, high achieving athletes that I mean, professional hockey players, D1 football players, because I admired those traits in them and I feel like I possess none of them. You know I'm not humble. And at the time, I was not hardworking. My career was not where I wanted it to be. My life was not where I wanted it to be. One of them, he was younger and I was like, oh, this is a fresh start for me. Like, I, it's fucked up. It's fucked up and twisted, but like, you have to identify that. And it's like, oh, it's not him I was obsessed with. Or even if it was, it's not that I loved him. Because like, when I looked at it, it's like, well, wasn't that funny? Wasn't that interesting? Mm. It was that I wanted those traits. And Katie wanted those traits from those men. Confident, smart, respected. No one questioned their talent. No one questioned their legitimacy. They were invited to all the meetings. They weren't talked down to. They weren't screwed over in negotiations. They were respected, right? But the problem is, when we imprint on people like this, we, we get 
further from becoming our true self, not closer, because now we put a person in between where we want to be and where we are, right? And we can't go through that person. And we try and we try and we try, and we just get more and more and more and more attached to him. And then it's like why an alcoholic drinks, to numb a pain, to get away from a trauma, whatever it is, to forget something. But now you got the alcohol on top of the problem that hasn't gone anywhere. Now you got this low self-esteem and on top of it, you've got John fucking Mayer, right? And John Mayer is probably like a good dude for somebody out there. I've always had this weird premonition I'm gonna end up with him. Isn't that weird? It's just like, I'll probably end up with John Mayer. Maybe. That would be cool. He's got a house in Montana. I love Montana. Um, so you have, you've imported more problems into the scenario. And so you're further away from achieving your authentic self because now you're like, I'm obsessed with him. It's him, him, him. I need to get him back. No, baby girl, you need to get you back. You need to get you back. And when we get in these spirals, when we can't forget a guy, when we find patterns of we're dating the same type of person again and again and again, what are we trying to get out of there? Are we recreating a family relationship and trying to do it right? That is very common. Do they embody something we ourselves don't feel like we possess? And instead of being like, time to work on me, we think, oh, it's going to be so much easier to work on this relationship. That was my last relationship. Absolutely. And that's why I'm not over it because I am ashamed that I didn't have that clarity at the time, you know? And so that's something I'm processing a lot and dealing with. And speaking of processing, here is where Katie made the critical shift in her life, the shift that would shift everything away from the bad and towards the good. She took time alone. There was a Diplo situation after John Mayer, right? Because her and John were together for two years, I think 2014. And then her and Diplo had a thing. He would not claim her. I mean, talk about a very smart, very funny fuck boy. Diplo's an odd duck. I do him, obviously. You know, he's so hot. But but he's he's getting like dad hot. He is, he is a dad. Oh, maybe I wouldn't actually. Mm. Um, but yeah, he wouldn't claim her. They like went to Jamaica together, but like it was very like undercover, kind of fizzled out. Who knows? You know, it's like one of these relationships. Who knows? And then we didn't hear much from Katie in terms of her dating life for about two years until she met Orlando Bloom. And if it was you just out of a breakup, just out of like a Russell Brand, a John Mayer, a Diplo, just decimated as a person, if someone's like, it's going to be two years before you meet someone, you're going to be like, oh, ah, why don't you just, why don't make it a hundred? Why don't make it a thousand? Just blast me into space. I have nothing to live for. It seems like an eternity, right? And it's not, not an eternity. And I'm not saying it's going to, you're going to be two years. You could be six months. You could be two months, but time heals nothing. Time heals nothing. It's what we do with the time that matters. And Katie did something with that time. I remember reading an article, and this like kind of changed my perception of Katy Perry in a big way. She's like, everyone tours, you know, I go on tour and most, she, she, I don't even know if she said most pop stars. She's like, I used to shop my way around the world. Paris, I'm going to Lanva and like Rome, I'm going to so-and-so. She's like, I decided to learn my way around the world. Every city I went to, I went to a museum. I would read about it. I would have a tutor. They would give me lessons and I would try to learn about where I was. And I was like, Oh, I think that was like actually a super impactful thing for me because I travel a lot and it's it's funny as you get older being nerdy is it's it's harder it's I mean it takes a lot more effort it takes a lot more money you know and it's just less socially like acceptable it's like we're going out we're getting drunk we're going shopping it's like it's not like we're going to a museum then we're going to the public library to hear this lecture on so and so and we're going to this art gallery like and there's a time and a place for the drinking and the shopping I'm going to do it later today someone could my mom's supposed to bring me a margarita actually and I'm like a little annoyed I don't have one <laughs> that's okay that's okay um but <laughs> it's almost margarita o'clock but she purposely shifted that and when she did that she began to hone in on why she had been with the John Mayers and the Diplos and the Russell Brands maybe this was conscious maybe it wasn't but when she started to give that to herself, these kind of guys lost their appeal. Hmm. Oh, you're smart. I'm smart. Oh, you're funny. I'm funny. 
oh, you can talk about anything at a party and feel important and like you, you know, don't feel weird and not confident. I can do that too. And then those knots loosened and your decision-making processes refine, right? You see people like John Mayer come in, you're like, mm. they're just, you can be like, oh, he's funny, he's intelligent, but it doesn't have this ego pull because that's what it is. And I don't mean ego, like mm, I'm egotistical. Ego is our sense of identity, right? And it's what drives us. And so it's like, you aren't pulled, like force field magnetized to these people because, oh my God, they are filling a hole. You are thirsty and they are quenching you. You can quench yourself. I've said this before. What if you could print money at home? Like real money. Would you ever go out and get a job? I just want to work at 7-Eleven for fun. No. You'd stay home, print that money yourself, and need no one. What if you could print your own self-esteem? What if you could print your own healing? What if you, what if you could be the person you want to date. What if? I'm not saying the goal here is to roam the earth alone like the Incredible Hulk. Absolutely not. We want to bond. We want to partner up. But what is dating? Not 50-50. It's 100-100. What if you could be 100 and be happy by yourself? Not, and by choice. And be like, I choose to have a partner now. I choose to go out now. But I also can choose to stay in. I can choose to read a book. I can choose to go on a girl's trip and not be like, no, guys, pay attention to me. What if you could choose that piece? You can. And that's what Katy Perry did. And that's why those two years that she was single, probably they weren't agonizing times for her. How do we know this? Because she chose an awesome partner, right? The fact that she radically shifted from someone like Russell Brand, who is publicly humiliating her on purpose, multiple times after I'm sure she got feedback, he got feedback about that, to someone who is like, we're digging in, this is a spiritual journey, we're growing, we're making ourselves better, I'm holding you accountable, you're holding me accountable, we're in this zen, like, Hawaiian jungle of emotion, you know, in a good way. That, that is her reward. And you know what? If you're in an unhealthy place, that doesn't sound like a reward at all, that sounds fucking awful. You're going to, you're gonna make me tell the truth? Ah. You're gonna make me open up about my past? Eh, I didn't like it. You're gonna make me do this hard, sticky, emotional work? Ah. Uh, how about, how, what if we just, um, you just sang some songs um, and you were John Mayer and we just hooked up a lot and you're Diplo and, you know? Think about what you deserve in terms of what you're putting out and what you're getting back. I don't mean deserve, like you don't deserve to be happy, but like how much introspection are you doing? How much emotional work are you doing? So then why do you think you deserve someone who is doing all that emotional work if you don't deserve it, if you're not gonna give it back? Maybe you're attracting John Mayers because you're a John Mayer too. Ugh. I know, I am right there with you. I mean, I am in this. I am in my Katy Perry season. My Katy Perry season of growth, and it fucking sucks. It sucks so bad, but it doesn't though. Like, it sucks the way working out sucks. You're like, oh, I just wanna stay home and be lazy. You wanna stay home and be emotionally lazy, right? You wanna wallow and be pitiful and all of this stuff and victimize, but like, this is how we get out of it. This is how we snap that victim narrative. We're proactive and we're like, you know what? I'm gonna look at what I did wrong in this relationship. I'm gonna throw open the books of my relationship as a business, I'm gonna do an audit. Pretend I am the IRS and my love life is a business. I'm gonna go through this shit with a fine tooth comb and I'm gonna find out where there's corruption, okay? I'm gonna find out what isn't exactly adding up from what I say I want. Oh, I want a stable, loving partner. Okay, well you choose liars and cheaters, so why is that? What's driving that? Something is, something is, and of course, we get blindsided. I just wish we were blindsided as much as we think we are. I've said this before, I say this to you guys all the time in messages, 99% of the messages I get from you guys, it never boils down to, I didn't know who he was, I'm blindsided. It almost always comes down to, I knew and I ignored it. 
I ignored the red flags. I dialed down my standards. I ignored my intuition. I gave someone the benefit of the doubt way more times than they deserved. And here I am. And now, not only am I heartbroken, I'm fucking furious. I'm murderously angry. Why? Because I knew better. Is that not the worst feeling in the world? It's, 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 it's awful. It's absolutely awful. It's up there with eating five pieces of cake yesterday when you broke your keto diet and now you look puffy and sort of like some sort of weird sea otter. Here we are. Not the cute ones, the round ones. So now Katie has come through this and now she has crafted a relationship with Orlando that to me, I mean, and who knows? Who knows what goes on behind the door? But this is as good of a happy ending as I think it's gonna get. I mean, this their relationship makes me happy. and. It's not like it's without problems, but the fact that they've committed to working on them because they committed to working on each other, I mean, I'm sorry, on themselves, that's the difference. So when we have had a string of shitty relationships and we're like, I want a good guy, you first have to ask yourself, well, do you? If you say, I want a good body, but you eat nothing but cake, do you want a good body? And if not, what is fueling that cognitive dissonance? What is, what is between your goal and where you are right now? What is in there? Is it, I don't deserve it? I don't think I can achieve it. This actually is, the shitty relationships work for me because the cake works for me because then I get to feel bad about myself and that validates my low self-esteem, my self-worth because my mom told me I was worthless or my boss tells me I'm worthless. It's all connected. It's all connected, right? And we can see, we can see these, these relationships so much faster and more clearly with people like drug addicts, alcoholics, you know, morbidly obese people. It's like, okay, there's there's a very direct connection between their mind and their destructive actions, but we don't see it as easily in relationships because alcohol doesn't talk back to you. Food doesn't talk back to you. Food isn't manipulating you. It's just sitting its ass there in the shelf, right? You know, a sleeve of Thin Mints waiting to be eaten. Just oh, take it down like a pelican. Oh. People talk back. People manipulate. People have their own issues going. So the waters get very muddy, right? And you have issue dynamics, like you do with food, alcohol, but you also have love. And you have the influence of society, the influence of your friends, of your family, of, your, of, your, of everything. So it's very, very hard to see. And that's why if you take nothing away from this video. What you need to take away is time. You need to take some time. When you break up with someone or get out of a string of shitty relationships or just feel yourself getting to that exhaustion point, you know, which I, I hear it in some of your guys' messages, I hear the fatigue. I'm with you. I'm there. You know, I, I'm there. And it's easy for other people to be like, you're over. You are over. We're going out. We're going out. You're going to meet a guy. Get on Tinder and open it up now. We're going to swipe for you. Give me your phone. And it's like, you don't need to do that. People want to rescue you from pain. You know, it's your friend's natural inclination. It's like, you're over it. You are, you are going to be over him in a week. And sometimes that's like the most painful thing to hear because it's like, I don't want to be over someone. I miss them and I love them. And if I'm over them, like I don't even have the ghost of them. I don't want this exorcism. I want to, I want to keep the demon here because it's keeping me company. It's painful. But you need to figure out what is the best course of action for you. Not the timeline your friends have, not the timeline your parents have, maybe not even the timeline your therapist has. But you can't know that if you're rushing out trying to get your fix, like an alcoholic or a drug addict, to anesthetize what you're feeling. I call it wallpapering. I'm sure other people do too. But I have historically broken up with one dude and immediately gotten another one. I mean, I'm a hot bitch, you know? Like, a girl like me don't stay single for long. But instead of dealing with the relationship that I just got out of, instead of working through those emotions, I was like, no, wallpaper. I just pasted right over what came before. And when you do that with actual wallpaper, it's lumpy and it's bubbly and it's ripply and it looks cheap and it's just like, oh, I don't wanna look at this. And guess what? Being in these relationships, I had the same feeling. Ugh, I don't wanna do this. Like I haven't been single, single in a really long, really long time, like years and years and years. And now this is like, the first time that I am like single and I'm doing this on purpose because I need, I need to fix patterns, you know? And 
doing this channel and doing this for a living, I am very cognitively aware of things like at all times, you know, I'm thinking about this stuff all the time, all the time, all the time. But again, it's, it's easy when it's someone else's life, when it's your own life, it's like, okay. So ask your friends, sit them down, maybe over email. I believe in email because then you can digest their response like bit by bit. Cause sometimes it's like, Life comes at you fast and like analysis comes at you like a wave and you just simply can't process it. You just reach your absorption point. So be like, what patterns have you guys noticed in my relationships? Do I always chase the guy? Do I not read the writing on the wall? Do I go for dudes who are dead ends? Why do you think I do that? Like get some insight or don't and keep dating Russell Brands. Keep dating John Mayers. Keep banging your head against the wall because you don't want to walk around and open this door to insight and a higher level of enlightenment, I guess. And it isn't fun. It is painful. But like anything else that isn't fun and sometimes painful, it, you take, it's practice. You simply practice it to be good at it, like anything else. Blowjobs, saxophone, driving, shaving a cat, whatever it might be, it takes practice. So start small. Just write down all of your relationships in the last, I don't know, two years, five years, whatever, even six months. Be like, what do I see in common with these people? Is it traits from the individual guys? Is it the trajectory of the relationship itself? Is it a trajectory of my own behavior? Do I start out real cool and then I go bananas and the guy dumps me when they end with all these fights and blah, blah, blah. And then let it burn, let it process. And then revisit it. Be like, hmm, now that, okay, I'm coming back on this piece of paper, it's written down. I'm looking at these patterns. Okay, where else do I see these patterns in my life? Are my friendships like that? I have a really good best friend and then we have a blow up and we never speak again? Hmm. Do I see that pattern in my family? Do I see it here? Do I see it there? And things will start to take shape, right? But you have to give yourself the time to do that. You have to scrape off that old wallpaper before you put new stuff on. And it's kind of a long process. So give yourself the room and the happiest girls I talked to who are the ones are like, I had a really bad breakup and I took some time and I worked on myself. I got my career where I wanted it to be. I started working out. I fixed my friendships. I fixed my family relationships. I went to therapy. And I'm not saying that all of this is going to insulate you from hurt ever again. Because if you're talking to me, you're, you're in a place of hurt. You know, like I'm, I'm, a, I'm the doctor. I'm going to fix you. I'm not actually a doctor. You know that. But you come to me so much more fully formed and so much wiser and I'll even say, like, I can tell that the old you would not be in this place right now. The old you would still be making excuses for his behavior. You would not view this as a red flag. You would ignore it. You would dial it down. You would have to get to a level 10 before you're like, fuck, something's wrong. Now you're at a two and you're like, this is not right. I want to fix this now. Should I cut my losses? I'm evaluating this as dispassionately as I can, even though it's painful. That's growth. That's the Katy Perry trajectory. That's what we need to do. Because remember, her relationship with Orlando was not completely smooth sailing. They broke up. And we don't really know why. I don't know why. Maybe one of them cheated. Maybe one of them wasn't ready. But the important thing is they got back together. And I'm not saying you should run out and get back together with your douchey ex. But at some point, they committed themselves to growth and accountability and forging a true partnership. And you cannot be in a partnership if you don't know who you are, if there's no division of labor. You can't be half of a whole if you don't know what half you are. Think about a business. You're running a hardware store. I need a partner who can come in and use a wood saw. You hire a partner. Uh, I, I didn't ask them about the wood saw thing. I just, I just hired them. Well, then they're not going to be able to fulfill what you need. You, they don't possess those skills. Kate in Orlando made sure that they each possess the skills that the other one needs and that they themselves possess them. So because of this, I like... I think they're a cute couple. I hope everything goes well. I mean, we know that getting engaged is not the end of the road. Having a baby does not mean everything is smooth sailing. Of course not. It's a third party in your relationship. It's a third party. It's fucking tough. Even getting married is not like happy ending. I think we're all becoming aware of that. You know, getting the ring, getting the I love you, getting the hookup. There's a lot that's after that. But I have faith in them because I think they've done the work and I think they have the tools. So I'm excited to see where they go. Maybe they'll name their daughter. Shallon. Maybe they'll see this movie. She's so wild. Oh, I love her. Tell me what you think about Katie in Orlando. Um, do you see his nudes? They're pretty good. <laughs> do you, if you had to date one of Katie's exes, 
who would you choose? And do you think I'll end up with John Mayer? If I do, I will invite all 301,000 of you to the wedding. I will make him pay for it all. I love you guys. I'll see you later. Mwah.